Today we're gonna bike 17 mile drive, which is a beautiful drive along the coast to Carmel past Pebble Beach. So any golf fans out there. And then we're gonna see the Carmel Arts Festival in Carmel and check out the town. Should be great. Can't wait, let's go. Let's do it. The road itself, actually you have to pay a toll to go through on a car, but it's free for the bikes. So here is the little gate one side, if you're a resident, you get to go for free. Other side, you have to pay. Bicycles. Go we this get to, way. We get to circumvent the toll road. Ta-ta. Bike on by. And look at this Spanish moss here. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Check out these deer. Wow. Eating oh the flowers. My goodness. Right next to the ocean. They're beautiful. They've got really fuzzy antlers. Look at him. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> no fear, I love that. See, like, on one side here, there's a golf course. The nature here, even outside of these golf courses, is just beautiful. You got the, the coastline, you got the animals, flowers. It's just a nice, peaceful bike ride on 17 mile drive. I love this ride, honestly. It's so nice. Yeah, me too. Like, we've done it a couple of times now, but it doesn't, get old because the coastline is so beautiful you can see the monterey cypresses here on the course they sort of remind me of the uh, maritime pine that you can find in france and italy but uh smaller and i don't know they look more mysterious to me they almost look like haunted in a really beautiful way they fit really well with the fairy houses that we'll see in carmel actually there's something a little mystical about them yeah look at the color of the water it's like Light sea green and blue. Amazing. Oh, nice little sand beach here. NorCal Beach Day, sweatshirt on the beach. <laughs> Horse crossing, do not block. Oh, that's cool. That'd be a nice way. You know, if you don't, if you don't like biking and you got a horse, maybe that's your, your way to do this. I always liked this house here. I don't know if it's like a passive solar house or what, but it's just, looks like these eyes poking out of the ground, looking right out onto the ocean. So 17 mile drive started as a scenic route for the guests at the Del Monte Hotel, which was located in Monterey. And so they would take them on a carriage ride through the countryside here. This was a couple fishing huts uh, and forests made up of these Monterey cypresses that we're biking through now. And that hotel was actually a uh, pretty fancy hotel back in the day. Teddy Roosevelt stayed there, the former president of the United States. Um, Hemingway, a uh, bunch of big names came through. Not surprised, I mean, it's beautiful. It's got a very unique charm. Doesn't look like a lot of the other parts of California or many other places around the country or the world. Look at that. It's like a ghost forest. So along 17 mile drive, there are little places that you can pull over uh, and little sightseeing tours or history of the area. This is Crocker Grove, where the largest and oldest Monterey cypresses live. It's named after um, Charles Crocker, who was a railroad baron who started that Del Monte Hotel and helped create this entire route through here, the 17 mile drive that used to be a nice countryside tour for uh, wealthy patrons and now is a trail for everyone to explore and bike and drive and ride on your horse apparently. The houses in this area are absolutely bananas too. I mean, you can imagine next to beautiful coastline on a private road <laughs> by one of the most famous golf courses in the world in California. Uh, they're probably gonna be pretty ridiculous looking houses. Um, it's nice, nice to look at, I guess, when you bike by. I mean, they're nice houses, but they're not castles. Holy cow. Look at the tower on the left there. That is incredible. Wow, that's, uh, that's what we call next level. A really cool viewpoint here. 
you get to see the lone cypress, which is the oldest cypress in the world. And it's just sitting on this rock jutting out into the ocean. It's pretty neat looking. It's also the emblem of uh, Pebble Beach Golf Course. Mary's gone with the full dick in the box look today. You said I'm this photo. Shade out. <laughs> Shade out, stunner shades. The Monterey Cypress actually once almost went extinct. Um, they are naturally grown only here on the Monterey Peninsula. Um, but their popularity and their beauty has saved them from extinction. People plant them now around the world. Uh, and now they, they are being uh, safeguarded. And uh, there's a conservancy effort to make sure that they grow wild. Holy cow. That looks so cool. That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And right here is Ghost Trees, which is known for its epic giant waves. It's very dangerous, uh, but in the winter, there's swells here off the beach that can get like really massive. And if you don't surf it the right way, you smash into the rocks. Only for the experience. <laughs> Yeah, it's called ghost trees for a reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah, unfortunately, I think there are a couple of ghosts here. No, but I think it's called ghost trees because of the way the fog and the, the trees sort of give it this haunted, haunted look. Stopped along the way here at Pebble Beach, parked our bikes, and now we're gonna grab a drink, walk around for a sec before we keep going on to Carmel. For sure. I gotta put a head on them. I don't know if these sunglasses really fly on their own. <laughs> <laughs> I think they do. They look good. This is the US Open Cup. I see Tiger Woods on there. We started out here. We're taking a 17 mile drive to Carmel and out and back. This is a cool trophy. The women's amateur trophy actually looks cooler than any other trophy. Look at that. Some cool artwork on there. There's a nice sheep on the top. <laughs> I think that's ice on top, that little flower. There you can see the lone cypress on the emblem of Pebble Beach Golf Course. We got all the champions here at Pebble Beach. Oh, nice little pit stop. Now we're off to Carmel. I'm gonna go and check out the art festival today. Carmel is a really interesting town. This is Carmel by the sea, which is like the portion next to the ocean. Um, Carmel has these ferry houses uh, all around. So you can actually see right here, look at this like interestingly shaped house. It looks like it's part of like a Disney set and the seven dwarves are gonna come out of it. Um, but in the 1920s, a man named Hugh Comstock. He had a wife who made these dolls and she made so many dolls that she needed a place to house her dolls. So he built her this doll house and it was in this fairy cottage style. Um, and this concept kind of exploded around Carmel and a bunch of different people wanted fairy tale style cottages. So now you can see them all over Carmel. You can see like the wood shingles on top. It's amazing. Looks like Hansel and Gretel's house. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, one of them nearby here is called Hansel and another one's called Gretel. So we're trying <laughs> to poke around and see if we can find those. Even City Hall is fairy tale style. Look at the lettering here. <laughs> you know where we are, Mary? Carmel. Yes, we're in Carmel. But we're also at the post office in Carmel. And the reason why this is interesting is in Carmel, there are no numbers on the houses. So there's no like 506 Fifth Street. Uh, and that's not on purpose. 
So everyone who lives in Carmel who wants to get their mail actually has to come to a central post office. And that's by design. They've been fighting uh, numbering houses for a long time now to maintain like the, the village charm of Carmel by the sea. So if you wanted to get like a package from UPS and you wanted someone to really like get it to your door, you'd have to describe where your house is relative to the streets and other houses around you. Like three houses from Fifth Street going towards Sixth Street next to the greenhouse. Uh, so yeah, very interesting. It's, I think it's like the only town in the US uh, where there are no house numbers. These are some really cool dials on these PO boxes. Super old school. You got two letters that you, I guess, dial it to. I don't know how these work, but look at all these PO boxes for all the residents. It's amazing. The interesting thing about having a post office where everybody has to go get their mail is that you basically now have a de facto social club because everybody's going to the post office. So it sort of like adds this nucleus to the community, which is sort of cool. There's a little secret passageway here. We're going to check out um, by the Cholatil chocolate store sign. It's a pretty magic little alley. Yeah, this is cool. Look at these vines here. They're cool. Wow. I know, it's so cool. It's a little back alley world. It's cool. It's a nice little park. We made our way to the park to see the Carmel Arts Festival. All the artwork is created from scratch during the weekend of the festival and then sold at the exhibition. We met Natalie earlier that weekend while exploring the coast and she explained the festival's unique artistic challenge. That is so cool. How long does a, a picture take usually? Okay. Oh, so after yeah. two hours, these the basically the implements for for drawing are gonna degrade somehow, not gonna no, work no, as well, no, or actually your, uh, your quality of light changes. Ah, okay. So all of a sudden the sun can come out. Like when I started, it was very very misty. Yeah. Mm. So this sort of deepened, and yeah. so I went back in and deepened it before I started painting it. Oh, cool. Okay. So you usually want to get done about two hours. Nice. Okay, very good. You cool. said where you're from, you, you're not Southern from? Southern California. Southern California, okay. Yeah, okay. Palm gotcha. Springs. Oh, cool. In between oh, yeah. LA and Palm Springs. Yeah, much it's drier. Very dry. Yeah. <laughs> if timed painting seems hard, the festival even had timed sculpture, but we learned that this wasn't just any sculptor. My name is Stephen White. I um, make clay people for fun as money. <laughs> um, we've been doing it about, oh, this will make me sound old. I think I've been out of college for, you know, 20, 30 years, so we have a 68 life-size and larger bronze figures in the world all over the place, and we've been doing the Carmel Art Festival since 2005, and then every year over three days we start with a sort of basic blocked out figure, and then we try and change it into somebody that uh, people might recognize, and we don't tell them who it is, so mm. they uh, have to keep coming back and seeing it as it looks more like them. <laughs> Um, and this, which we've been trying to do a few local people lately. We did uh, Betty White last year, and mm -hmm. then two or three years before that, we did uh, Doris Day. Wow. And this year, we're doing a um, starting a statue of John Madden, uh, yeah. who used to live here and uh, have his lunch across the road. So he was a, a local uh, celebrity and local, as well as a national one. Uh -huh. um, so we're going to. See if we can't make it look like him yeah. in the three days that we've got, which is a rush and wears me out. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. That's perfect. Uh, I also saw the head of former President Jimmy Carter floating around here. Is that, is that yeah, you? Yeah, that's the plaster head. For, it's a 3.3 times life size of uh, President Carter. Mm -hmm. And we did that for the Carter Center in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought we'd just, because it's a bigger scale, we thought we'd bring it to the park. But we've uh, had some fun with uh, Jimmy and Roz, including going to uh, going down and seeing them uh, last September. Oh, no uh, kidding! So you, you met President Jimmy Carter. Yeah, yeah. And his we wife. Went, uh, he he'd uh, I did his bust to start with, a uh, life size ish, 
And then uh, he phoned me up and asked me to do his wife. So mm. we did that. And then he gave the bust of his wife to um, to Roz for Christmas. And then they both yeah. called me up on Christmas Day and thanked me, which was really nice. And then invited us, me and my wife, to go down and have lunch with them. So we did. We went and did that in September. That's incredible. Did you uh, start in the UK or yeah. you came over yeah, here? Yeah, I uh, came over here in 99. Yeah. Um, I had... You know, risen pretty quickly as a young portrait sculptor, mm -hmm. and then got all the way up to uh, where they start to realize that you don't speak properly. Oh, and really? They, uh, then there was nowhere to go higher than that without the right to Oxford English um, no accent. So I thought, you know, where respects talents and hard work and you know success is the U.S. So, wow. and Carmel and Monterey have a, a similar all year round. Uh, you know, weather is an English summer day, so <laughs> it's not too hot and it's not too seasonal. Yeah. So, yeah, I did 30 years of seasons in the UK, so I thought... Does does the weather affect, like, the, the ability to sculpt or...? Only when we do it outside, which yeah. is only three days a year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, and, and the studio gets hot and cold, but, yeah. um, but it's fine. Uh, it doesn't really affect it much. Awesome. I mean, yeah. Well, thanks a lot. Thank Appreciate you. It. All right. Thanks. Yeah. We're going to check out Carmel Beach, which is very beautiful. And at the end of the point there is also Frank Lloyd Wright's house, one of the ones he's built. Um, so it should be nice to check out. I feel like I'm going to die. This hill is so steep, <laughs> going down to the water. Carmel Beach has this amazing, like, pristine white sand and this beautiful blue of the ocean. It's like a nice light blue. We got surfers in the water today. Over there. Man, all these Monterey cypresses on the shore. Sand dunes, you can see Pebble Beach over there. There's the point that we biked around. The water is just this beautiful blue. It's like, it's like watercolors, it's amazing. No surprise that Carmel has attracted artists from around the world, especially painters who come here and sit for seascapes. I mean, it's basically paint itself here. Right on the tip over there is a house built by Frank Lloyd Wright. He's like a really famous American architect who has some beautiful homes. So we're gonna bike over there and just see if we can see it a little more clearly. This house was built for a widow who wrote to Frank Lloyd Wright saying that she wanted a home on the oceanfront designed by him and has the shape of the bow of a ship. See that here? It recently was sold for $22 million. Uh, actually, apparently to some guy from Monte Carlo, which feels on brand, but it's a beautiful house. Beautiful piece of heritage right here in Carmel. From the beach, we got back on our bikes and completed the 17 mile drive loop. It was a hard bike back uphill to start, but it was worth the pain and we hope you agree because in our next video we'll show you what we pedaled so hard for, the town of Monterey. We learned about Monterey's unique history as a town that's been part of three different countries, so be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next adventure. Sweet relief on the downhill, Mary. Oh, sweet relief. Oh. Thank the Lord. That hill tastes so good right now.